The scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. You can find that on page 50 of the new section of your uh, Pew Bible. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper pennies, which were worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said, and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to give. Thus reads the scripture for this morning. Will you bow with me in prayer? God, we give you thanks for this moment, the moment where it is that I have the awesome opportunity to be able to share with the people what you have shared for me, with me. Thank you, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts is acceptable in your sight, God. You are our strength and our redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray, give thanks, and believe it to be so. Amen. If we look here at this text, it appears that the moment in verses 41 through 44 was offering time. Jesus had just finished teaching as he answered questions on resurrection, the greatest commandment, and even his kinship to David. No sooner than he was finished, people began to give. Those who had gave, regardless of how much it was or even how much it wasn't for that matter. The text says that Jesus watched as the people gave and that the rich gave large sums. Could it be that the rich gave the way they did and as much as they did because they knew that Jesus was watching? Did that make any difference? Does it make a difference to you when it comes to giving to know that someone is or is not watching you? Nevertheless, I'm sure with what the rich gave and the way they gave, the treasury filled up quickly. There was no silent money, what we know as paper money or bills in that time. All the money was in coin form. When the rich gave their coins of high value, they made a lot of noise. While the widow, who simply gave what she had by way of two mites, which we'll call pennies for the sake of the sermon, barely made a sound in comparison. Does any of this sound familiar to you? A penny saved is a penny earned. Penny pinching. Find a penny, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck. And of course, the favorite, pennies add up. These are all great idioms concerning the coin that based on what meets the eye and what is known in history is the lowest man on the face value totem pole. But what happens when they don't seem to add up? When those pennies are all you have, what do you do? You look at them. No, seriously, look at your penny. Most times we look at pennies and deem them to only be worth one cent. But who says that they can't be or aren't worth more? For this widow, it was as if the two coins she contributed which some translations say were only worth half a cent, were worth even more than the large sums the rich contributed. It wasn't what she gave, but it was how she gave and the reason why. Wouldn't you know that if her coins had any of these following dates on them, they'd be worth so much more than their seemingly mere and measly half cent? For example, a 1909 S. Wheat Penny has a face value of $429. A 1949 D wheat penny is worth 4,000. Or how about the 1943 copper wheat penny? $85,000. And the good 2007 Lincoln penny is worth 1,300. 
So who says that a penny is only worth one cent? From a penny perspective, I wonder if the pennies felt minute or unimportant as they were added to the treasury. I wonder if they felt like grasshoppers in the midst of giants as the rich gave large sums. But when they did, like the prophet Jeremiah in Lamentations 321, who called some things to mind which gave him hope, they called to mind the pep talk that Miss Widow had with them. She said, hey, I know we've been together for a long time, but it's time for you to go hang out with the big coins. You have some work to do. It's time for you to be put to good use. The master can do so much more with you than I can. And remember, you are just as good as they are. What made them just as good wasn't their outside value, but the value that she gave them. Atlanta, Georgia native Mr. Herman Russell, known as a multi-million dollar developer and construction mogul, as well as one of the greatest contributors to the civil rights movement, is known for valuing a penny. One of his well-known idioms was, if you watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. I take his term watch to mean being mindful of how and where we spend our pennies. Ironically enough, those closest to him knew Mr. Russell to stay on the economical side of things, if you will. He watched all of his pennies, and Miss Widow watched her pennies too. She could have used them for anything, especially considering that she was a woman of poverty, but the greatest way that she used them as she held them tightly and made her way to the treasury was when she reached the treasury and she let them go, knowing that they were going to be in better hands of those doing God's work. Using my sanctified imagination, I'd venture to say that she gave with just as much pride as the rest of those around her, if not more. Those two might were of great value to her. There was no piddling in pity for her poverty. She paid no mind to the looks and airs of audacious prosperity of the rich. She didn't give to brag to her friends of how much she gave. She didn't give for the sake of, of saying that her name was on the roll or that she knew that her pennies would give and go towards X, Y, and Z. She didn't give so anyone could give back to her. She gave because she wanted to. She gave because she had the heart to. She gave because she had the mind to and because it felt good. Last year, Reverend Gary Straub, Northwood's interim at the time, reminded us that giving activates endorphins in the brain associated with happiness, positive feelings, and oxytocin, which is the feel-good hormone. In man's eyes, her mic were only worth half a cent but in God's eyes, they were worth millions, hence the reason why this story is about her. And that's the blessing. Jesus said she gave from her place of poverty. Sure, poverty was on the outside, but inside she gave from her abundance and her fullness from her heart, which is where true riches reside. And that's the blessing. She did it because it felt good to give, and she knew that her might would be put to good use for the kingdom, and that's the blessing. Jesus never called her out or called her to himself. He didn't call the disciples to give to her after she gave. He didn't tell the rich to look after her. Still, I have no doubt in my mind that 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 came into play for her, and that God made all grace abound towards her so that she'd have sufficiency in all things and have abundance of any resource needed for every good work to be fulfilled. And that's the blessing that God supplied, which is continuous provision, all of her needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. That's the blessing that though we don't read about it, I believe Romans 8:28 came into play that all things work together for her good and for God's glory according to the power that worked in her to give her very last for God's work. That power works in us as well, Northwood, because we are a good work and that's our blessing. 
steadfastness, stewardship, patience, diligence, courage. That's our blessing. A sustained food pantry, two Sunday school classes, a men's Bible study group. That's our blessing. Faithfully committed long-standing members and new members that have joined and will join this church. That's our blessing. Cons consistent visitors and even new visitors. That's our blessing. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and it hasn't even entered into our hearts or minds what God has in store for us as we continue to press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And why are we pressing? Because we are a good work and that's our blessing. Do you believe it? As we prayerfully consider what we will give, because we want to give, let's do it also because it feels good to. Let's give and release that happiness hormone. Let's give because we want to see Northwood thrive in existing and new ministries like evangelism and community work. Let's give because we know that the ground of Northwood is good ground and that plenty of harvest has grown and will grow from this good ground. Let's give because we know that whatever we give will be a blessing to many in many ways. Let's give because we know Northwood is a good work. Let's give from the abundance of our hearts and watch how God will give back to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Who said that a penny is only worth one cent? that after today you never look at a penny another the same another day in your life I hope that after today you do find a penny and you pick it up because that penny has so much more worth than the one cent that is on the face of the penny God we give you thanks for this moment we give you thanks for the opportunity to hear from you and to not only hear your word but be doers of your word we give you thanks for this beautiful day Thank you for all that you have in store for us as we leave this place. And now, God, may your grace and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. It is in your name that we do pray, give thanks, and believe it to be so. Amen. Amen.